Hey YouTubers, you've reached the Debunkified channel. Uh, in this video we're going to be showing a self-charging capacitor. And that's the self-charging capacitor. Alright, uh, so this is just a 555 timer circuit. Um, here's the circuitry right here. Uh, I just got a meter reading current coming out of our power source. I'm using a battery right now. And uh, the battery is just uh, running the circuitry to run our switching. And that is all. Uh, and this is just the current showing uh, the power from the battery just running our switch. And that's it. Over here, we have a capacitor. And uh, we have the capacitor's negative running through. Uh, over here through the switch uh, through this MOSFET and through a coil right now I, I'm bypassing the coil to show you something first okay but normally it goes through the coil and then uh, let's see where's that over here okay and then it's just going right back to the positive so I'm pulsing the energy out of the capacitor through the coil but right now we're showing uh, to uh, eliminate any possibility of MOSFET leakage okay there could be a MOSFET leakage in here so to show that okay everything's off that's the voltage reading across the capacitor but not only that but there is a resistor right here right across the, uh, the capacitor so we have a load here as well. So this is to show that the capacitor should be draining uh, itself through the coil. We'll hook that up here in a second. So let's do that right now. Also, I have all these resistors on here, a diode. Um, it seems like the more resistance I add uh, and the less power I give to the switching circuitry, okay, this over here increases. All right, so let's turn that on. Well, first we'll show this with a battery because uh, I just want to show that first because uh, the battery goes down. And as you can see, there's about 28 milliamps, okay, flowing from the battery into our switching circuitry. Now, this power is only running the circuitry to do the switching, and that's it. This over here is completely separate, or it should be. Uh, and if you look... I'm bypassing this coil right here okay uh, right here I'm bypassing it and we are simply just taking the negative and pulsing it through the switch back to its own positive so we're keeping keeping it completely discharged and as you can see there's only six millivolts there so I assume that's the uh, MOSFET leakage of just six millivolts and so the capacitor is being kept discharged at that level. Now let's bypass the coil. Uh, or I mean, uh, let's insert the coil. And now, as you can see, we've got charging of the capacitor. Well, this capacitor should be discharging through our switch and through the coil instead. We have capacitor charging with the load resistor across the capacitor. So to show that this is a real actual voltage in this 10,000 microfarad capacitor. Let's see if we can see that. Probably can't see it. It's too dark. Right there, I guess. 10,000 microfarad, and we've got charging. Okay, and uh, with a resistor across it right here. It's across the positive side here. The other side is uh, simply just going to the, the negative side. So we've got a load even. Uh, and this is about how high it charges. It's about 350 millivolts so far. And uh, so that's self-charging. 
capacitor. So if you look over here, uh, I'm going to take this battery off and come back and we're, we're going to use a, a wall adapter to save the uh, energy of the battery. So that's just to show that this is being done from a battery. So be right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, okay, so we've replaced the battery with a power adapter. I know it's a little bit messy. I haven't had time to clean this up, but it's real basic and simple. We got a 555 timer circuit being run from a power source right here. Uh, the negative, okay, is just going right directly to the negative here in a second. I'm going to show you the negative going across two resistors right here, right through here, and also through a diode. And to show you that uh, the power that's actually running 32 milliamps through our switching circuitry actually increases the current or the voltage over here in our self charging capacitor. Also, by the way, I wanted to mention. Right now, it's got the 29 milliamps going into doing our switching uh, through all these resistors and the diode right there. Um, and here's the voltage over here of our capacitor that just won't drain. Okay, I wanted to say that we've got a, a gate source resistor of uh, 10,000 ohms sitting right here. Across the the gate and the uh, source of our MOSFET as well as a 10,000 ohm resistor going in between the gate of our MOSFET and pin 3 of our chip so this is lots of resistance right here uh, so if there is MOSFET leakage you'd have to go through all that resistance and uh, charge our capacitor up to its 6 millivolts I showed earlier that's not what's happening. We have 354 millivolts with a load resistor on the capacitor and about 20,000 ohms of resistance through the gate and source and pin three and through all this resistance over here and the diodes resistance. So I wanted to show you that right quick. Okay, uh, so here so right now it's at uh, 330 millivolts so if you take this negative the negative is directly connected to the negative of our power source right here and if we bypass that and uh, let's go over here to this side this is through two six ohm resistors power resistors Okay, so the current drops slightly to 31 milliamps, but really, I'm not quite sure exactly yet as to what that has to do with this over here. But as you saw, there's 330 millivolts uh, before the resistors, and now with the resistance, we've gone above that to 330. 5 millivolts. So we got an increase of voltage over here. I guess that makes some sort of sense uh, because resistance normally would, I think, raise voltage, but then the current has gone down. So why would the voltage on this output over here go up? And the, it's just a circle, basically. This should be discharging out, but it's not. It's uh, charging up. So that has gone up to 338 millivolts, right around there. So now if we add the resistance of our diode uh, over here, right here, this is now we're adding a diode, the resistance of the diode, okay, so there it dropped a little because we disconnected it momentarily. Well, look, we got 29 milliamps now feeding our switching circuitry because, uh, well, we added more resistance. We got the resistance of the diode and the resistance of two 6 ohm power resistors right there on the negative side right here. 
So this, this is going to uh, the negative side right here in our switching circuitry. And as you can see, we've got even a higher voltage, 350 millivolts and climbing. So I just wanted to show you that adding resistance to our switching circuitry is somehow increasing the voltage over here in our self-charging capacitor. Uh, so I wanted to show you that. Uh, also the load, this also has a load resistor right across our uh, charging capacitor. So, uh, all right, I wanted to show you that. Um, I don't know what else I can say about this. Sorry for the, the mess. Uh, well, let's bypass the coil again to show what's coming right out of the, uh, you see? It goes right back down to uh, six and a half millivolts, which is apparently coming out of this MOSFET. If it is indeed coming out of the MOSFET or leaking out of it somehow, but then how can that be? You have uh, over 350 millivolts from just six volts. That's almost 100 times the energy or 100 times the voltage at least. Even a, even a back spike from a coil can only get about 20 times the amount over the voltage of the power source. So what is this exactly? What is this? It's not radio waves. I could connect this capacitor and a diode directly to this coil and uh, it's not going to charge. The radio waves aren't strong enough and there's nothing there. I've already done that. Uh, so, not sure exactly what that energy is, but it's there. So, uh, that's about it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, please like and share, and I'll see you on the next video.